Good afternoon. I hope you're having a good time at the book festival. Um, my name is Nora Krug, and I am a book world editor and writer at the Washington Post, which is a charter sponsor of the National Book Festival. Uh, first, I want to give a word of thanks to the co-chairman of the festival, David Rubenstein, and the other generous sponsors who've made this event possible. If you'd like to add your financial support, please note the information in your program. We'll have some time after this presentation for your questions, and I've been asked to remind you that if you come to the microphone, you will be included in the videotape of this event, which may be broadcast at a later date. Our guest this afternoon is Sylvia Acevedo. She will be signing at 4 p.m. over there. <laughs> um, but for now, we get to meet her in person. Uh, Sylvia is a woman of many hats and glasses. She is an engineer, a businesswoman, and as you probably know her best, as Chief Executive Officer, Officer of the Girl Scouts of the United States. <laughs> Among her many philanthropic contributions has been providing thousands of pairs of glasses to children who needed their vision corrected. But long before that, Sylvia um, spent her childhood in Las Cruces, New, New Mexico, a place where she could see a lot of stars, and it was those stars that inspired her to make a rocket that would earn her a brownie science badge. The rocket didn't actually get to the stars, but her interest in science grew, and despite some challenges in her life, she stuck with it. She ended up at Stanford, becoming one of the first Hispanic students, male or female, to earn a graduate engineering degree from the university. She went on to fulfill her childhood dream and actually become a rocket scientist at the Jet Propulsion Labs. She later worked as an engineer at IBM before becoming an executive at several Fortune, 500, Fortune 100 companies, Apple and Dell. And in May of 2017, this longtime Girl Scout became the CEO and her, her life was transformed by Girl Scouts and she has gone on to transform Girl Scouts itself by adding some science, technology, and engineering to the program. And now she's added another thing, which she is an author. Um, and this week her memoir, Path to the Stars, comes out. Um, it is a heartfelt story about Sylvia's childhood and shows how both the good and the not so good that happened to her uh, led her to accomplish all of the many things that I have just described. Um, it's a beautiful and inspiring story that I'm going to be share with my own nine-year-old daughter, and I hope that you will share with yours. And now to tell you more about her life and her book and Girl Scouts is Sylvia Abacedo. Hey, thank you very much, Nora. All right, Girl Scout families, let's hear it. Ah! That's wonderful. We have so many go-getters, innovators, risk takers, and leaders, and the families that love them. So thank you very much for coming today. So today I want to tell you a little bit about my story, my book, Path to the Stars. There we go. So one of the things about me is all my family was born in Mexico. I mean, my parents were born in Mexico. My mom was born in Mexico. My dad was born in El Paso, Texas. But my dad joined the military, and he was officer in the Army. And I was, he was stationed in Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota. And so what is up there? That's right, Mount Rushmore. I was born right by Mount Rushmore. So my parents were so excited about being in South Dakota, they bought all these different things like sugar bowls, cookie bowls that had that image of the presidents on Mount Rushmore. And so from when I was a really little girl, the image of the presidents and the United States was just in my heart and in my head. But then after that, my parents decided to move back to where they were from. And so, can you play the mic? I mean, play the video, please. So we moved to a universe which seemed so far away from South Dakota, we moved all the way to the desert in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Here we go. Whoa. We moved to this town, Las Cruces, and you can see it's the desert. There's only one desert drier than that desert, and that's the Sahara Desert. So it's really dry. 
but I loved it. I loved, I loved the, my family, I loved my friends in that really small town. And when you wonder how small the town was, you know, when you had to write a letter to somebody, you just put their name in the street. You didn't even have to put a zip code. The town was that small. And I loved that town because you could see the stars and we had these beautiful Oregon mountains. And so you could just see this really pretty scenery and everything about my family was happiness and light. But then one day, my brother, older brother, and my younger sister and I were playing and everything was fine. But the next day, my, dad, my brother went to school and my sister didn't wake up. And when I went to touch her forehead, she was very, very hot and non-responsive. And I went and got my mother. And my mother went and touched my sister and realized she was so sick. And we didn't have a phone in the house. My mother didn't drive a car. And here she had a daughter, lifeless in her, hand, in her arms. She went running down the street, knocking on doors, crying to people. Ayudame, ayudame, help me, help me, please. Finally, somebody found her and got in a car and took my mom and my sister to the hospital. There was a meningitis epidemic that had swept through our home and our neighborhood. It's a serious disease. Some people died. I was worried my sister would die, but she didn't die. But that insatiably hot fever, if any of you have kids, your moms worry when you have a fever. They worry because if your, head, your brain gets too hot, your brain is forever changed. And that's what happened to my sister. My sister, the one who was the smartest of us all, the one who could light up a room with her energy, she had become special, but in the Special Olympics kind of way. And so for my mother, that moment was really hard. And she looked around and she said, the only neighborhood, the only neighborhood where kids got sick and there was a meningitis epidemic was our neighborhood, the neighborhood with dirt streets. And so for my mother, she said, we're going to move. And at that point, my mother said to my father, I'm going to learn to drive a car. And then once she learned to drive a car, she started driving around and finding another neighborhood, a neighborhood with paved streets. And so we did move. She found a new neighborhood with paved streets. And how many of you have ever moved in the middle of a school year to a brand new school? Anybody have that experience? There's a few. Is that fun? Not at all. Not at all. And so at that moment, why is it not fun? Somebody said it. Because everybody's already made friends, right? And so you come into the middle of the school year and everyone has already made friends. And so I hated that school. And my teacher did this very funny thing. My new teacher, she put all the smart kids by her. And then the ones that didn't do as well, you got seated further away. So when I entered the new classroom, they put my, my desk the furthest away. And the boy in front of me turned around and said, now you're the dumbest one in class. Oh, I hated that. So I would run home from school every day. But one day, as I was running home from school, this girl kept following me. And, she, and I would run faster and she'd catch up with me. And she was very persistent. She was a go-getter. She was a brownie. And she said, why don't you come to Brownies with me? And I said, no. And she said, well, we're in front of your house. Go ask your mother. So I went in to ask my mom. She, can, mom, can I go? Have you ever asked your mom a question like you want the answer to be no? So I said, mom, you don't have to say yes. But this girl, she wants me to go to this activity. You don't have to say yes. But my mother was excited because for the first time, I was showing some enthusiasm around something at the new school. So she just wanted to know where I would be. And she said, yes, go ahead. So I went to that program, and I fell in love. And there I was being a brownie. You can see, look at how old I was. I was missing a tooth, right? I didn't care much about fashion. Look at my tie, right? 
But what I discovered at Girl Scouts and in Brownies that there were girls like me, girls that like to do fun things, that like to do active things. We did bike rides, we did camping, we did all sorts of fun things. And it really opened up my mind and my eyes. And I liked it so much that the next year I wanted to join again. But then, when I saw that all the fun things we had planned, I said to my troop leader, my family can't afford it. You see, my family lived paycheck to paycheck. We lived in near poverty. We didn't have savings. And I said, how am I going to afford this? And my troop leader looked at me and said, don't worry. You know what we're going to do? It's, we're going to sell cookies. And the cookie program changed my life. The reason is, is that when you're raised in poverty or near poverty or living paycheck to paycheck, you don't know how to create opportunity. And what the cookie program taught me and what my troop leader taught me is you set goals and then you break down that goal into smaller parts. And then once you have the smaller parts, you do those little things and pretty soon you've achieved your goal. And also you set your budget. And all those things taught me so much. The other thing that she taught me is never to give up in persistence. So she taught me a life lesson that I keep to this day. Never walk away from a sale until you've heard no three times. So the first time I started selling cookies, I went to everyone I knew. I went to people in my church. They all bought, but I still had it made my goal. I needed to sell more cookies. So I realized I was going to have to talk to people that I'd only seen in the neighborhood but never talked to. So I went to the neighbor and I asked her if she would buy cookies and she said no. And no one had ever said no to me. And I said, uh-oh, well, but what did my troop leader said? You can't walk into a way to hear th no three times. So then I said, is there anybody else at that house that would want to buy cookies? And she said, no. And I stayed there and she looked at me like, I've said no, go. And I looked at her like, I've only heard no two times. So I look around her, and I look at her, and I said, is there anybody's day that you would make if you bought a Girl Scout cookie? And she said, OK, she bought a box, OK? So that taught me an important lesson in persistence, a lesson that I carried my entire life. The other thing is I learned about counting up my cookies and my cookie cash. And I, that really taught me a love of numbers and of science. And one of the great things about Girl Scouts is that my troop leader saw me looking at the stars. And so when she saw me looking at the stars, she remembered that. And later on, she asked me, why don't you earn a science badge? And I decided to make a science badge by making an Estes rocket. And so to earn my science badge, I made an Estes rocket. And what I learned is you have to get the chemicals right, which are like the ingredients. You have to get the sequence right, and you have to get the heat right. And when you do that, the rocket finally went into the sky. And that's a lot like cooking. Cooking, you have to get the ingredients right. You have to get the order right. You got to get the heat right, and then you'll have success. The other thing I learned in Girl Scouts is I loved math, and I didn't know that before. But as I counted up my cookie cash, I counted up my cookie dollars, I realized that was a lot of fun. And then I also learned to make things. I wanted to make a duffel bag, but there was no pattern for making a duffel bag. So my mother said to me, how are you going to make a duffel bag, especially a duffel bag that has round ends? And I said, don't worry, Mom. I did the math. So I made the drawings, and then I used this thing called pi, and that, that tells you how, what the circumference is. And my mother said to me, I'm glad you like math, Miha. So I was able to make that great duffel bag. And from those experiences, I learned so much in Girl Scouts, but so did my mother. My mother, who only spoke Spanish, through Girl Scouts, her troop, my troop leaders befriended her. They taught her English, and then they also taught her that she could become a citizen. So she had a green card, but my father had never encouraged her to be a citizen. And my troop leaders encouraged her to be a citizen. So when I 
jumped up and, and bridged from Brownie to Junior. My mother had a bridging ceremony herself, and she became a US citizen. My mom also ran a Girl Scout troop for my sister's developmentally disabled uh, class. So she had, my sister was able to be a Girl Scout as well. Now one of the great things I've learned later on is how do people escape when they sometimes grow up in poverty or their families don't have a lot of money? What I've learned is Girl Scouts taught me there's four ways to get out of poverty and Girl Scouts did all four of those for me. It helped me set a goal. It had a caring adult, that troop leader who looked out for me. It taught me that I had an amazing skill, which is math. My math skills, because of Girl Scouts, became so strong that I kept taking math and I was able to be a rocket scientist. And then also I learned it, I didn't have to live that way, that it was too painful to stay and I could get out. So when I was in fourth grade, I don't know how many of you have seen this, but that's Stanford University. But I saw a picture like that when I was in fourth grade. And I said to my teacher, I want to go there. And my teacher walked up to me and she said, that's Stanford University. That's one of the best places in the world. And she said, and you're a smart girl. You can go there. So fourth grade, I decided I was going to go to Stanford. And as it turns out, not only did I go to Stanford, I was able to graduate from Stanford University. And I've had amazing experiences. I was actually, a, I worked as a rocket scientist. There I am working on the Davis gun in the Tonopah Desert at the test range. Here I am loading up a missile as well. And then I worked at NASA at the Jet Proportion Laboratories in Pasadena. And I worked on two missions. One was the Voyager 2 which went by Jupiter and its moons Io and Europa. And so I got to do all this amazing analysis. It was the first time we ever saw these great images of Jupiter up close. And I got to see them, you know, I was one of the first people to see them, and that was so exciting. The other thing was I worked on a mission called Solar Polar Solar Probe. It's just recently been renamed Parker Solar Probe, and it just launched a few weeks ago. And I worked on that project decades ago. And it was so great to see it finally launch. Because when you work on something that's going to the sun, you have to think about so many things. Like, think about it. What is the sun? It's solar. It's hot. So how do you have a spacecraft that gets that close? How about radiation? How about solar wind? What if it gets hit by asteroids? There are all these things that you have to think and factor into that. And so that took decades. And that was so much fun to be part of the initial planning phases of it. So I've had a great experience of being, a, because from being a little girl, I've been able to be a rocket scientist. And I've been able to fly through the sky. I've been able to go para, para jumping with the Golden Knights. Imagine being three miles high in the sky and jumping from a plane. It was an exciting experience. And who would have thought that that girl born about my Mount Rushmore would grow up to have all these amazing experiences? And I knew I was able to have these amazing experiences because I was a Girl Scout. And now I'm the CEO of the Girl Scouts of the USA. So I know we have lots of Girl Scouts in the audience, and I wanted to make sure we have some time for questions. And I know we have young Girl Scouts, and we have alumni Girl Scouts, and we have people who care about Girl Scouts or just care about the rising generation. So you please go up to the mics. Now, one of the questions people ask me is, how about boys? Do you like, they like the book. And I have to say, boys like the book as well. There's stories about basketball. There's stories about cars. There's stories about rockets. So they tend to like it as well. I see we have a crowd, so go ahead. Why do you write? Why do I write? I love that question. What happened was I was talking to kids like you. And there were so many of them wanted, that wanted to talk to me about my story. 
that I realized the only way I could reach so many of them was if I wrote a, story, wrote a book. And so the book could be in every school in America. So that could be inspired. So good question. Thank you. Over here. What difficulties did you have to overcome in order to get into NASA? Uh, great questions. The challenges of, of getting in. So first of all, your math has to be really, really good. Okay, So you have to keep taking hard math classes. The other thing is when you work in an all-male environment, you have to be ready for that. So how many of you saw the movie Hidden Figures? A lot of you. Do you remember the bathroom scene? OK, so what I like to say is they at least had a bathroom. When I started working, there were not even any bathrooms for me. So one of the challenges I had to overcome was to figure out where the closest women's bathrooms were. And they were far away, so I had to bring a bike in to work and drink just a little bit of water. And I, when I had to go to the bathroom, I would hurry up and go to those other places. It took six weeks. But then finally, the other engineers decided, OK, she's not going to quit. She's got to, you know, we're going to bring in a bathroom. So they brought me my own bathroom that said hers on it. So, there's, so you have to be persistent. You have to be resilient. You know, and for example, a lot of the um, equipment didn't fit me. Like you'd have to wear overalls. Like if you saw that picture of me working on the Davis gun, you might not have noticed. But I had to put duct tape because it didn't fit me. It wasn't made for somebody my size. But I never gave up. I was persistent. OK, another question. OK, so I'm one of the older Girl Scouts. Hi there. <laughs> Hi. My name's Sylvia, too. Oh, great name. Um, what? So we adults know that, ki that young people hear what we say, but they learn more from what we do. So what did you learn, what one thing did you learn from the people you saw and heard from that shaped you today? So, you know, I really learned persistence. I think I was talking about that story where my troop leader wouldn't let us walk away from a sale until we heard no three times. And I saw her do that as well. So it's so important to mod not just say be persistent, but model it as well. V very good question. Over here. What's your favorite type of Girl Scout cookie? Oh, my favorite cookie. <laughs> That's a really good question. So. I will tell you, when my mother was a cookie, uh, she ran the cookie campaign. And one year, we had to be the cookie cupboard at our house. And we didn't have a garage. So we moved our furniture to the backyard. And our entire house was stacked floor to ceiling with cookie boxes. And to walk down our hall, I had, you had to walk sideways. <laughs> but there was one cookie that I wanted to be in my bedroom stacked floor to ceiling, and that would be? Samoas. Oh, Thin Mints. It's Thin Mints. Uh. Th good question. OK. Right. Hi. Um, Hi. Alumni, Girl Scout, and Yay. leader. Yes, um, thank you. What is one piece of advice that you would give to our current Girl Scouts so that they can succeed in their life? So first thing that you can do to succeed in your life is be a Girl Scout. I mean, half of all of our female elected officials in America were Girl Scouts. Three-fourths of our senators, Girl Scouts. Almost every female governor, a Girl Scout. And almost every astronaut in space, female astronaut, a Girl Scout. When I go to Silicon Valley, almost all the female leaders, Girl Scouts. So the one thing I would say that you have an amazing advantage at Girl Scouts that you don't have in any other youth organization is getting your gold award. If you get your gold award, that's like helping to write your college essay. And there's all these scholarships available. This man came to my office, and he wanted to give me a hug. And I said, fine, but why? And then he said, because my daughter's gold award project was so good, it was her college essay, and she got four years scholarship at one of the top universities in America, all paid for because of her gold award. So the gold award gets your kid into college, top colleges with scholarships. So I would really encourage them to do that. OK, next one. What was, what was the name of the girl that inspired you to be a Girl Scout? Oh, what was the name of the girl that invited me? Actually, I know her name. Her name is Sylvia Black. 
So it's kind of Sylvia, we've got a lot of Sylvia's going on, but I remember her. Thank you. What changed your mind about going to Brownie? Great question. I write about that in the book because once I was there, remember my sister had been sick, my family had gone through a big trauma and tragedy. And when we were doing an exercise, we were doing a craft project making sit -upons. So we were cutting fabric and newspapers and put, weaving them together so we'd have something to sit upon. How many of you know sit -upons? Okay, great, you know sit -upons. Well, we were sitting in the circle and I handed the scissors to the girl pointy edge first. And our troop leader stopped and she asked the brownies to demonstrate the safe way to pass scissors, which is always not the pointy edge, right? And so they did that and they also told me never run with scissors. Okay, so I never knew there was any rules about passing scissors, much less one and two rules, right? So at that moment, I realized if Girl Scouts cared enough about me about how I pass scissors, imagine how much more they would care about me. And it turns out they cared about me so much and it changed my life. So that was the moment I said, I'm going to be in Girl Scouts. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, we... It's, I forget. it's okay. I'm glad you're a Girl Scout. Yes. Um, hello. Hi, hello. Um, what changed your life about doing math? What changed my life about doing math? That I really enjoyed counting. But when I was in Girl Scouts, I didn't realize math had a purpose. And so when I was counting my cookie cash and counting the number of boxes I sold, I realized that math could help me reach my goals. And that made math fun for me. So after that, I realized math was fun. And so math became a way that I learned I could make my goals. So that, when I was in Girl Scouts around fourth or fifth grade, that helped me. Thank you. I know her. Her name's Amanda. And Amanda wants to be an astronaut. Right, Amanda? Yes. Yay. Um, so did you see Voyager 2 launch? Okay, no, I didn't get to watch Voyager 2 launch. It was already in orbit when I started working at JPL. But thank you. Good question, Amanda. How did you build the rocket? Okay, good question. How did I build the rocket, the Estes rocket? It came in a kit, and I actually had to buy several kits because I did it wrong the first two or three times. And uh, my parents made me use my allowance, so it took me a while to actually earn that badge because you had to be careful. And I learned that you had to read the directions just right, and you had to get the heat just right, and then you put the kit together. And when I did that, I finally was able to get it to launch. But very good question. Thank you. Thank you. Which kind of cookies do you like? She asked what kind of cookies do I like? I like all cookies. I like all the cookies. I do have a little bit of a favorite preference for Thin Mints, but I'll eat a Girl Scout cookie anytime. Good question. Why did you want to be a rocket scientist? Why did I want to be a rocket scientist? You know, when I was making my rocket for Girl Scouts, you know, it took me several times, and the thing that amazed me was, how come it doesn't just launch? How come it can't just get up off the, gra off the, the desert sand? And so I learned about this thing called gravity. And so to me, I became fascinated with how do you break gravity's grip? And so the rest of my life, I was always thinking, how do I break gravity's grip? And then I thought rocket scientists, that's what they do. So that's why I went to work at NASA at JPL working on that. I didn't want to be an astronaut. All right, we have time for a couple more questions. When did you start being an author, and what was the first badge that you got? What, okay, uh, great questions. Um, I started being an author four years ago when I was talking to kids and they wanted to get my book and I knew I needed to reach more of them. And I think my first badge was a cycling badge. Great question, okay, coming up to the end. Since you liked the stars so much, why weren't you an astronaut? You know, I was more interested in how do you get a rocket to leave Earth and breaking gravity than actually being up in the, up in the space. It was a different interest of mine. I was never interested in being a rocket, I mean an astronaut. It's just a different interest. 
And I'm glad I did what I did. I have friends that are astronauts, and that's fantastic. But I'm glad that I lived the life that I did. All right? Last one. Last? OK. Go ahead. All right. So we're going to wrap it up. So what I want to thank you. The the book is in English and Spanish. In Spanish, it's Camino a las Estrellas, Path to the Stars. Make sure you have it in your libraries. Make sure that you get it. I hope that it inspires to have your own dreams come true and your own path to the stars. Thank you very much. And because we're so many girls, why don't we do make new friends? How's that? All right, ready? One, two, three. Make friends. Click. Yeah. One and others go a circle it round it has no that's all right thank you very much everybody see you at the book signing <laughs>